Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Words of Heart. In today's episode, we have the privilege of speaking with Kimberly Spencer. Hope I got that correct. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Dion. It's a pleasure to be on with you and to be here sharing this space. Thank you. No problem. So, Kimberly, um, if you could tell my audience a bit about yourself all the way from Australia, which is really, really cool, <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, so <clears throat> I'm just getting over a little bit of a cold, so I'm working on, on not coughing too much. So my, um, I, I am a high-performance coach. I built a multi-six-figure digital empire and I help other entrepreneurs do the same. I work with typically work with entrepreneurs in every area of their business in every industry. I have clients from construction workers to coaches to celebrants to psychologists, but it's really about how do you build your aligned authentic empire? That thing that's that's really in alignment with your soul, with your heart, with your purpose. And how do you take ownership and really build that? And obviously, if you can tell by my accent, I am not Australian. I am American, originally from Los Angeles. And we were here vacationing back in March of last year in 2020, which was a you know fantastic time to take a vacation. <laughs> um, my husband is an anime voice actor. And so he was appearing at one of the conventions here ironically with the cast of The Walking Dead, which I found very ironic as a pandemic was breaking out. And we just looked at each other and we decided, you know, our vision has always been to live in a foreign country, to raise our children in different cultures. And if we're going to get locked down, we might as well do it with the beaches, our backyard. So we didn't pack for three weeks and now we're staying for three years in Australia. And it's, it's a beautiful, wonderful adventure. And we're about to have our second baby here, and it's uh, it's a wonderful adventure of just really living into the things that we practice and that we preach, which is living into the vision that you create for yourself and, and creating your dream life, pandemic or not. Oh, that's absolutely beautiful. Um, considering we're in the pandemic, um, how has that um, helped with your business and helping others like create find their authentic selves with their vision and their passions. Huge. Because as soon as like, I've had my business online since its inception. Um, and I've only had an online business since 2018. So prior to that, I had uh, a brick and mortar Pilates studio in, in Burbank, which I'm very grateful I closed um, back in 2018. And then I also had an e-commerce store for a couple of years back in 2014 to 26, uh, 20, 2012 to 2014. And so I'm used to having online businesses and like everything coming online was just now it, the, the beautiful thing about the pandemic was that, and I'm the type of person that can find a silver lining in pretty much anything. Um, but the beautiful thing was that it required companies to innovate. It required people to innovate. So every single one of my clients who had event-based businesses or brick and mortar-based businesses they had to pivot into how do we adapt and innovate, which is one of the key things that keeps businesses alive. And so that also helps keep people, um, helps keep you on your toes too. Uh, but that was, that was one of the things that they all had to do. They all had to look at how do we, how do we innovate to whatever is happening? So instead of being reactive from a fear-based space, they had to be responsive and say, okay, this is how we're going to continue to serve our customers. This is how we're going to continue to take aligned action. And then to do that and have the courage to do that. Cause it takes a lot of courage to innovate anything. It takes a lot of courage to change. That's why most people don't, but things like pandemics and, and especially last year, it requires these major changes when something external hits us from outside, it requires us to be able to adapt. And that ability to be able to innovate and adapt, not only our businesses, but who we are as leaders, who we are as people, how we show up as parents, like parents had to show, start showing up last year as like homeschool teachers as well. <laughs> and and also, how do you show up as engaged? How do you engage with your kids when you're like not able to leave the house when you're with them all day long? How do you still 
have those conversations? How do you still connect with your family members? How do you connect with other people? We had to start evaluating and looking at how do we innovate all the ways that we're so used to connecting to still have that connection, even in times where we're isolated. Right. And I definitely agree with you on it, learning to adapt. Um, just to give you further insight into me and my authenticity, um, I got um, diagnosed with diabetes a year ago at the start of the pandemic wow. in January. <laughs> so as far as um, trying to find um, the silver lining to um, that particular drastic health change, in the midst of a pandemic that could potentially kill you, <laughs> mind you, um, was a lot for me to um, handle and undergone that experience. Um, I'm still breathing. <laughs> I've been diabetic for a year now and this yeah. pandemic hasn't disappeared yet. Um, and I've only recently got my vaccine. So that's also a blessing as well. But I definitely understand having to adapt um, during this unfortunate time we were in. Um, because at least from my own personal perspective, it wasn't easy. Um, having to undergo a drastic health change while there's a virus around and just completely changed my entire perspective. And even though many people would see being diagnosed with diabetes as a bad thing, because many people responded differently, I saw it as God's way of giving my life more purpose. Um, I'm a Christian, so my belief system is very important to me. Um, I saw it as God's way of giving my life more purpose. Plus, if I hadn't been diagnosed, I wouldn't still be here. Unfortunately, that's like a hardcore fact. I wouldn't have witnessed 2020, the year we all want to forget about, um, if I hadn't been diagnosed. So, um, yeah. And that's like, Dion, that is such a powerful message because that really speaks to the fact that life is happening for you, not to you. And we can take these diagnoses, we can take these external things that the, these things that happen to us, like I was not, my dad passed away in January from COVID and I wasn't able to go home to say goodbye to him, to say, to even go to his funeral. And like nobody could be in the hospital with him because of all the regulations. And I wasn't able to, to, to do that because of that, because of where we are. And so it's not saying that change is ever easy, but when you look at change from the beautiful perspective that you have of like, how is this happening for you? How is this happening for your purpose? How is this happening for something that could be even better? How is this allowing you to serve on a whole other level? Like with, with my dad passing, it's, it's allowed me to understand grief. So, and, and so many people are grieving right now and it, being able to have a deeper level of compassion and empathy are, are all gifts that I wouldn't have had had I not had that experience. And so I look at in every situation, one of the questions that I pose to my clients, especially when things look really, really down and dour. And when, when you're stuck in a challenge is how is this the best thing that ever happened to you? Because I look back at all of my life experiences and all of the hard things I had to go through from divorce to, um, to, getting out of abusive relationships to overcoming bulimia, to dealing with, um, my dad, who was an addict for most of my life. Um, I look at how grateful I am to all of those experiences because all of those experiences allowed me to serve the type of people that I'm able to serve today. They allow me to connect on a deeper level. They allow me to have a greater level of empathy and compassion and sensory acuity to like when someone's going through something, I can pick up on it. And that's something that's a really, that that's something that for me is a gift. And while many people can look at the, tra the traumas and struggles and challenges of life as like, oh, this happened to me. When you shift into a for me mindset, like, like you have of like that, this diagnosis has really served as a purpose that changes the game for how you show up. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I just want to acknowledge your courage and your, your bravery and your openness to share that. And, and that I'm sure that your diagnosis is now you are able to connect with people on a whole new level because of that experience, because you have diabetes, like 
you are showing them what's possible. You are showing them like it's possible to live into this, this purpose that you have. So, I mean, I, I commend you and I acknowledge you for, for sharing that. Thank you. And, um, in the grand scheme of purpose and fulfill, fulfillment, um, this podcast wouldn't be possible <laughs> if I hadn't been diagnosed. Um, cause it kind of kickstarted my whole perspective and how I value my life. And I thought, especially with everything being so negative with the pandemic that some people could use some um, uplifting and some positive perspective to help them handle this crazy time a bit better. So that's a real yeah. fundamental part as to why I started this podcast. But the smaller part would be when I got diagnosed. So <laughs> nice little small parts working its way into a nice big heart. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and sometimes it takes that big, like, smack of reality. Like when I first started my business back in 2014, I was super, super scared. I'd just been bought out of my first e-commerce company. I was was feeling, I had so much self-doubt. I had so much self-doubt that I did what I call productive procrastination. And I did all the things in my business to make it look good, to make it look really Instagrammable. But I was making no money. I was making no sales. And it took me getting pregnant. When I found out I was pregnant with my first son, I was like, oh, hell no. Like this person who I am right now, I don't want this to be the mother of my child. Like, cause I was, it wasn't just the actions that I was taking and how I was dabbling and playing small in my business. It was also the fact that I was blaming people. I was complaining on a daily basis. And my mindset really, quite frankly, sucked. Like I was in such a a victim, poor me mindset for whatever. And I, I, I just was not being grateful for all the things that I was blessed with. And when I found out I was pregnant, I was like, this is not the person that I want to be the mother of my children. And I had to shift really, really fast in, cause you know, when you have a, nine month deadline. You have a, there's, there's a deadline to get the baby out. (laughs) So I had to be able to get to, to, I had to step up. I had to shift my perspective. I had to change my mindset and I had to look at what did I, what was really the thing that I was here to do. And the thing is about any sort of judgments or fears or imposter syndrome or any sort of self doubts that we have about our purpose or, you know, why, why me, why, you know, who am I to start this or who am I to launch a podcast or who am I to start a business? Well, all of those fears are about you. All of those fears are about ourselves. They're not about the people that we serve. So when we can shift our focus from being on ourself to being on, to being of service to others, like you did with creating this podcast and to helping people and bringing them joy in their time of struggle, like that's a game changer that it, it just, it, it, it's a mindset. It's a small mindset shift, but it's a huge one because suddenly you start taking acts of courage you start taking big, bolder actions rather than playing small or hiding your gifts or thinking, Oh, why, why me? Or I don't know if it's the right time, or I don't know if I'm ready. Like sometimes certain things hit you in life where you're like, I didn't feel ready to lose my dad. I didn't feel, I didn't feel ready to necessarily have another baby, but I said, you know what, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's do it. We want to expand our family and why not in Australia? Why not, you know, here? And it takes courage to lean into that, to lean into what it is that, that you want to create in this world. Absolutely. And um, as I've become, began to realize a lot recently, um, even today, <laughs> um, change is inevitable. Change is always going to occur. Um, your purpose changes constantly. Um, for myself, um, just to give you a little further insight, um, like 2011, I thought, hey, I'm going to be like a youth pastor and, you know, help share the good word of God um, through youth ministry, but either life or the school or what, whatever the reason was at the time, my purpose and plans completely changed and got twisted around 
and now I'm in school for digital arts and that's amazing I, or <laughs> honestly I can every all the I'm like mixing my thoughts here but the point is um what you're talking about gifts and not hiding them or being ashamed of them um they all play a factor into developing us into who we are and part of that development is change whether we want to ignore it or not change is gonna occur you just have to either embrace it or let it I I, I don't know where I'm going with that Tactic. Well, I think you can either consciously create the change to lead into the life that you want to, to lead into your dreams, to lead into the things that you want to build, or you're going to unconsciously recreate your past or past scenarios that you wanted to avoid and things that maybe you need to heal from. And w- with consciously choosing change, like what I've seen, cause I, I too, when I was in my, uh, <coughs> when I was in my late teens, early twenties, like I thought Hollywood was it. Like I was born and raised in Los Angeles. I thought I'm going to be a screenwriter, producer. I'm going to be basically Reese Witherspoon. Like that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have my own production company. I'm going to star in movies. I'm going to write my own movies and da, 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 da. Well, I had the opportunity to write a feature film. It got produced. It got distributed. It's online. It's on Netflix. It got distributed through Lionsgate. And surprisingly, when I had that experience, I was like, why am I not a hundred percent fulfilled? Like I was at the premiere red carpet. And I'm like, why do I not feel like hundred percent fulfilled? And I didn't get judgmental about it. I didn't get like, Oh, beat myself up and feel guilty that I didn't feel hundred percent fulfilled. I was like, this is really curious. Why this dream that I've had to achieve, like I'm already, I'm on the path. And yet I don't feel like it's on my path. And it feels like something more is meant for me. And it was two weeks later that I found out that one of the kids who had come to my film who was a friend of a friend like because when you write a movie you get extra tickets and I was handing mine out like candy to anyone who wanted to come (laughs) and and this kid had seen the film and he changed his life and that was when I was like that is what I want to do with my life I didn't know how I didn't know what form But I knew that what I wanted to do is transform people's stories. And that's what I realized that I had been doing that kind of all along. I'd done that in my Pilates business. I did that with transforming people's stories about what was possible for their bodies after surgery or after giving birth to a baby. I was able to help rehab people's bodies into feeling strong and fit and confident again. Uh, I did that in my e-commerce company. I helped transform people's stories about their back pain and what was possible for their furniture because we sold a a piece of functional furniture that you could double as a back stretching chair. And so, and by taking that product to market, like I was still in the process of transforming people's stories. Now as a coach, I do the same thing. I transform people's stories about what's possible for their body or their business or their relationships or all three. And typically it's all three because everything intertwines. And, and, and by doing that, it's, there's a through line of purpose. So even if it's not the form, even if it's not the same form, like I'm not, I'm not technically writing my own show. I'm not technically, you know, producing movies, but I produce content on a regular basis, but I produce videos through my YouTube channel, but I produce podcasts through my podcast, The Princess and the Bee. Like I'm doing everything that I thought I would be doing, just not in the form that I thought I would be doing it. Awesome. Well, I'm loving this conversation because I completely understand where you're coming from um, because we have no idea where life is going to take us and we just need to go along for the ride. Yeah. And I think choosing to say, you know, when something feels funky, when something feels like it's not a hundred percent aligned so often, especially high achievers, like we get really judgmental about that. Like I should be feeling this, or I'm supposed to be grateful for my life, or I'm supposed to be grateful for being in this relationship, or I should be grateful for, you know, uh, having this job, but why am I not? And that is when there's a subconscious mind and a conscious mind disconnect between what our conscious mind is saying we should want or our egos are saying like this is what you should be grateful for versus our subconscious mind is like actually something's off here like 
let's explore. So instead of getting judgmental, get curious. Like, what is it about that thing that really sparks your interest? What is it about that relationship that may not be working? And explore that. Maybe it's not the relationship for you. Like, maybe it's, maybe it, maybe it is something that you need to move away from. Maybe, maybe that business is not the business for you. Maybe that doing that thing is not the thing for you. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's something different. Maybe it's something better. Because every time I've leaned into following my curiosity, it's led to gold mines of breakthroughs versus every time I've shouldn't myself as far as like, no, this is the path that I should be following. It has led to a hard, hard road. <coughs> I'm going to mute myself for just a minute. Are you good? All good. Yeah, all okay. good to go. <laughs> uh, well, I have this icebreaker question. Um, I guess in a way I could change it up, but I'm just going to keep it the same um, just because I'm me. Yeah. If you could have any superpower that's not flying, oh, it can't be the go-to power, even though many people go for it. I have to take it out of the running because it makes it too easy a question to answer. So if you could have any superpower, what would it be? That's not flying. Not flying. Okay. <laughs> Can it be close to flying? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for me, I would love, let me see, any superpower. There are so many to choose from. I wouldn't want invisibility. I can already tell you that. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want that one because I don't feel the need to sneak around and listen to other people's conversations. I think that that, like, while that would prove very useful as a spy, I don't think it'd be a fit for me. Um, like, I think I would love to have every superpower that Wonder Woman has, including the okay. superest of superpowers is the capacity to completely love and see people beyond, beyond their humanness, beyond our ability to make mistakes, beyond the, the mistakes and the messes and the failures and ever, you know, all the, all the humanness that's a part of that, but to be able to really operate and fight with and for love in every way possible. And, you know, the whole saving the world aspect is quite intriguing <laughs> for me. Like that really plays into my savior complex <laughs> of the hero of like jumping in and like saving the day. Plus like being able to really kick ass. <laughs> that would be really like, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the so joy about this question because many people approach it differently, which is why I always ask it. Cause it's such a fun question. Cause people try either answer it with the power they already possess or their skill set, And it's just such an amazing question. And I had no idea Wonder Woman had that power. I had no idea whatsoever. I should probably watch the movie now. <laughs> Have you not seen it? I no, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen like the it. first one. You haven't seen the first one. I will go. No, I haven't seen one. Beyond, <laughs> you have to see this movie. It is so freaking good. Like the first one is better than the second one, in my personal opinion. But I, like there is a scene and I both Wonder Woman movies came out in the same year that I was pregnant. Um, and I remember watching Wonder Woman while pregnant. And literally there is one battle scene where <coughs> I had tears because I'd, I'd never, ever seen uh, a woman leading, leading the charge. And it just, it gave me such goosebumps. It made me like cheer and made me cry. And it was like, it was amazing. That's, that's my homework to you. Okay, I, I have to watch Wonder Woman. That's my yeah. <laughs> yes, you must watch it. You must watch it, and then let me know. Please let me know what you think of it. Absolutely. Um. So the power I would go with, with I guess it's in correlation to um, 
female empowerment in a way um would be the power to have this podcast heard across other galaxies that have yet to be discovered Ooh, that is super cool <laughs> that is super cool that that is a really cool that like that sounds more like a hag though than a than a superpower like a big hairy audacious goal <laughs> like a, a 10-year goal when we realize that there's more life beyond this planet that it's able to be heard il- interdimensionary and in extraterrestrial galaxies it's a good possible and very likely power or skill set to have. Yeah. It's bound to happen in 50 years, but I don't know what the podcast is going to be around in 50 years. Probably will, maybe. I don't know. But it would just be cool for like people on like Mars or Pluto to actually hear it in their own galactic language because i'm sure there's like different languages on other planets oh yeah so (laughs) absolutely absolutely that would be so cool or like beyond our galaxy like that's that's what excites me like i saw a ted talk of a woman who said they think it's called like planet t something three it's like 70 billion light years away but it's a planet that looks and at least from the outside feels like earth. So I feel like to think that we're the only planet in this vast multiverse that has life forms on it is, is, is a little ego egoic to think like, Oh, we're the only ones. Right. I'm willing to admit, I don't know what I don't know. That's an interesting way to put it. <laughs> don't know what you don't know. Um, we can talk about intergalactic powers, but you did give me a superhero assignment. Um, so um, before I get into that um assignment, if you don't mind sharing your social plugins with my audience before we wrap up here, of course, of course, you can find me if you if you love this. If you're like, how do I get more of this? Um, go to crownyourself.com. You can find me on all the socials at crown yourself now. Awesome. Thank you for this wonderful conversation, Kimberly. It was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Dion, for having me and for being so authentic and vulnerable. I just, I, I am so excited to see you growing your podcast and, and I'm just cheering and championing you on because you are just a, a warrior. I can see it. Oh, you're going to end up making me cry before I end this episode, but thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, yeah, I have to go with my go-to saying because you almost had me crying just now. Um, To all my audience, <laughs> stay healthy, stay safe. Um, use your powers, whatever they may be. Don't hold back. And until next time. Bye. Bye.